some guiding thoughts from the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. If your meditation is deep and your effort is persistent, you will draw God to you. All life is a school of experience that points in one direction, Godward. Seek until you find him, for until you do, you shall never be able to solve the riddle of life, nor be free from the miseries that are part of mortal existence. To love the gifts of creation more than the giver is folly. Seeing God as the underlying reality is the way to solve the problem of being caught up in the delusive distortions of our material experiences. Stars, planets, plants, animals and human beings are all let loose on a beautiful cosmic stage with each one playing an assigned part. Very few people understand the meaning of the play because they do not pause to think deeply about it. To the unenlightened, the drama often seems chaotic and unjust. But God purposely did not automatically make all people poor or all people millionaires because if everyone were alike, this drama could not go on. Diversity is the basis of nature and self-evolution is one means of maintaining this diversity. God does not want us to suffer because of these differences. He wants us to know that whether one is currently playing the part of a king or of a servant, he, she must do his, her best, but never forget that as a soul made in the image of God, he is only enacting a temporary role. Therefore, it doesn't matter whether we scrub floors or whether we are the leaders of great nations, unless we know that we are merely playing a part on the stage of time. We will suffer from the dualities inherent in the consciousness of being identified with these different stations and conditions. Stage actors do not bemoan their particular parts, but enact their roles to the best of their ability, knowing they are temporary portrayals. Do you see? It is only when we take life too seriously that we suffer. Reincarnation is not compulsory unless you make it so. Life is a vast school. There is a lesson to be learned in everything. Life is teaching you all the time. You are a bad student if you don't pay attention. Renunciation is not self-punishment. It is the investment of a few temporal trinkets in order to gain the eternal treasure, God. Krishna declares that it is not necessary to forsake all things outwardly to find God. If everything you do is without 
selfish motive and done only to please him. To forget God for worldly duties is to show colossal ingratitude. For we cannot do our duty to our family and others without the power borrowed from him. Retain evenness of mind under all circumstances. In every situation, be calmly active and actively calm. Banish all disillusionment, all disappointments you might have found in losses and suffering. These constraints on the power of thought and will must absolutely be done away with. Your trials did not come to punish you, but to awaken you, to make you realise that you are a part of spirit and that just behind the spark of your life is the flame of infinity. Just behind the glimmer of your thoughts is the great light of God. Just behind your discriminative reason is the omniscience of spirit. Just behind your love is the all-fulfilling love of God. You are only dreaming that you have a body of flesh. Your real self is light and consciousness. You are not the physical body. The visibility of the body deludes our material consciousness. If you cultivate super consciousness, awareness of your real self, the soul, you will realize that the body is simply a projection of that invisible self within. If you are attached to human happiness, you are in for a lot of trouble because nightmares are inevitable along with the beautiful dreams. But if you will think of a dream as a dream, whether it is enjoyable or dreadful, you will have peace. When you realize that life is a dream, then you are free. If you can control your senses and keep your mind with God, you will be free. The divine man enjoys everything, but is not bound by anything. Man alone is responsible for lack and misery on earth. By this time, we could have had a millennium, everyone healthy and supplied with all of life's necessities, living in a happy and peaceful way, in a wisely governed existence. But man's selfishness and power in the hands of the inept destroy such a possibility. If today's world leaders were illumined by self-realization and worked together, they could, within a few years, banish war and poverty from the earth. Only spiritual consciousness, realization of God's presence 
in oneself and in every other living being can save the world. I see no chance for peace without it. Begin with yourself. There is no time to waste. Realize that you are visiting this earth only temporarily. You are here solely to learn necessary lessons and to help all who cross your path. You do not know why you have been cast in a particular role, so you must learn what God expects of you. We are here today. Tomorrow we are gone, mere shadows in a cosmic dream. But behind the unreality of these fleeting pictures is the immortal reality of spirit. Life here on earth appears futile and chaotic until we are anchored in the divine. So why strive hard to have something you will lose just as you cross the portals of the grave? Money, fame, prestige, sense indulgence, material comfort. These are all pseudo pleasures in place of the real joy of divine communion. Remember the temptation is powerful only because you have no sense of comparison with anything better. When you are strongly tempted, your wisdom is momentarily a prisoner of your desires and habits. But the highest way to freedom is to be so merged in the inexhaustible joy of God that you are able to relinquish all worldly pleasures in an instant. If you find true joy in this life, you will have it now and in the afterlife too. The purpose of this life is to find your self. Feel the throb of the ocean of God's presence in your heart. Your intelligence was given to you to discover why you were placed here, to find him. Seek spiritual riches within. What you are is much greater than anything or anyone else you have ever yearned for. God is manifest in you in a way that he is not manifest in any other human being. Your face is unlike anyone else's. Your soul is unlike anyone else's. You are sufficient unto yourself. For within your soul lies the greatest treasure of all, God. Thus do the saints say that to unite ourselves with God is the only way we can understand that this world is not something to which we should give much importance. Krishna tells Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, get away from this ocean of suffering. Be in the world and do your part, but do not 
be caught up and bound by its delusions or you will be enslaved. It is easier to find God in the jungle of civilization if you follow a balance between meditation and constructive, dutiful work. When you think about your mortal, mortal life and all your troubles and identify with them, you do an injustice to the image of God within you. Affirm and realize, I am not a mortal being, I am spirit. You must cease to think you are a mortal being if you would find lasting happiness. There are various techniques for discovering the spirit. Silence is one of them. Practicing silence means to silence all desires that try to percolate into your consciousness from outside. So you can go deeper within to feel your soul. Another step or technique is devotion. Prayer in which your very soul is burning with desire for God is the only effectual prayer. Unless material selfishness is abandoned, there can be no happiness in the world. Happiness will come only by spiritual cooperation when all men begin to feel for others' necessities as for their own and to work for others as earnestly as for self. Your fulfilment lies not in obtaining the objects of your desire, but in the unfoldment of your soul qualities, in making the effort to succeed in worthwhile endeavours. Do not be afraid of anything. Even when tossing on a wave in a storm, you are still on the bosom of the ocean. Always hold on to the consciousness of God's underlying presence. Be of even mind and say, I am fearless. I am made of the substance of God. I am a spark of the fire of spirit. I am an atom of the cosmic flame. I am a cell of the vast universal body of the Father. I and my Father are one. Read from the book of life that is hidden within, in the omniscience of the soul, just behind the darkness of closed eyes, discover that boundless realm of reality. You are soul. You can consciously know your soul, your true self, by meditation. And when you know yourself as soul, 
you will have discovered the presence of God within you. Do not settle for intellectual satisfaction about truth. Convert truth into experience and you will know God through your own self-realization. The glory of any true teaching cannot be known except by practice. You have to live the teachings of the prophets and the great ones. Then their truths become your own and you realise that truth is demonstrable and universal. Your only real need is God. There is no other necessity. In God, you have eternal life. Become aware of this great truth. Otherwise, your appointments in life will take over and you will die still bound by them. If you are one with him, you are not compelled to return to this dream earth Again, you are free to come and go as you like, to serve God in his children on earth. Do everything with the attitude of love, love for God and love in all. When the desire for self-interest is gone completely, from the consciousness and the only desire is to serve others and do the highest good for all that is wisdom it is very difficult to do but when selfish love completely goes then one tastes divine love real love is when you are constantly watching the progress of the soul. When you experience the true meaning of religion, which is to know God, you will realize that he is your self and that he exists equally and impartially in all beings, then you will be able to love others as your own self. Time is slipping away. Why do you let yourself forget God? Why leave this earth without knowing the mystery of life? Why you are here and whither you go? The only reason we are here is to find God and to go back to him. Love God first and make your body a temple of God. Do everything with the thought of him. Go after the supreme happiness and share him with others. Perfect your love in God's love and include all humanity in your love. Without being happy, you will not even be able to find him. The more peaceful you are, the more you will be able to feel his presence. The happier you are, the greater will be your attunement with him. Those who know him are always happy because God is joy itself. The temple God loves most is the temple of his devotees in her silence and peace.
peace. First establish yourself as a temple of beauty and peace. There you will find him on the altar of your soul. Sooner or later, each one of us will be taken away from this earth. Find out now what life is all about. The great purpose of your experiences here is to stimulate you to search out their meaning. Don't give importance to this procession of humanity. As time marches on, you must eventually realise that you are a part of the Great One. Make God realisation your goal.